All right, so uh, thank you very much, Peter, for that kind and uh, lovely introduction. So, yeah, as Peter said, um, you know, we, we got introduced to each other probably about five years ago now, maybe four, four and a half, five years, let's say around about that time. And Peter, as he said, came onto one of my weekend seminars, also came to the live room for a little while uh, to see how I apply this stuff in real time. And it was good to have Peter there. And we've, you know, since uh, we've stayed in touch and we've done a few things together as well in terms of webinars and presentations. Um, so if some of you guys are either from like my side um, or Peter's side, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, because we both promoted it via email, etc. on Twitter. So you probably either know me or Peter or both. So, so if you don't and you want to get a little bit more information on myself, you can always go to the website, thetradingframework.com. Um, there's an about us page there, which pretty much gives you a, a full rundown of my biography, uh, my experience, etc. So I won't take any time up right now with that. So uh, as Peter said, this is going to be a, a four part educational series. So um, I think it's, it's, re it's a really good idea because it's sort of back to back. I'm going to put my own spin on things and Peter's going to put his own spin on things. And I think it's good to see how traders use similar data, similar information like profiles and order flow data. But in uh, different ways and I quite often say with volume profiling and order flow there's just as many ways to trade the profiles and order flow etc as there is a price action chart a bar chart or a candlestick chart um, there is a misconception when people get into profile trading and order flow that there is going to be just one way um, so you know people will see someone another educator with volume profile and they've got value etc they've got bid ask footprints or the jigsaw there's so many different ways you can use this um, information. You can, it's, it's all down to how you interpret it, what story you put on it, and what you believe. Um, because you know, there's gotta be guys that are trading away from value, there's guys that are focusing on trading towards value. I do a bit of both, but tend to specialize on trading towards value. Uh, if you're new to profiling, I'll show you that stuff now. Uh, one of the things I have realized though in this industry um, is that there is a lot of fluff. Uh, I've read books and I've um, watched stuff online. When I first started trading back in 2001, I went full time in 2003. Um, so I started part time initially, but there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a hell of a lot of information out there on the internet. Um, there was a few decent websites, very basic sites like stopcharts.com, stop chartpatterns.com. There wasn't a lot. There used to be um, a Woody CCI, that was like the most popular thing back then. So I use something very, very simple called stage analysis, uh, which I talk about today, which I actually bring into the trading framework. Um, so when people see the way that I use profiling and order flow and, and the context which I uh, use this um, w within the realms of, um, so there's a framework, I call it a framework, there's a structure to do in trading uh, for my trading approach. It's not systematic, meaning that it's not fixed, it's not mechanical, it's not like a system, um, but it is discretionary. But at the same time, the issue I found with discretionary trading is that it's discretionary, right? So how do you know when you're doing the right thing when you're not? Um, and, and what I find a lot of traders tend to do, just as I did, you pretty much tra end up trading anything and everything. You don't really know whether you're trading your plan or not because it's discretionary. You're pretty much making your plan up as you go along. So, you know, we all then learn, you know, pre-market analysis. We establish some sort of um, levels and ideas that we particularly sort of trade around. Um, I call them visions. Some people call them scenarios. Some people call them hypothesis or whatever it may be. Uh, one of the things you want to firstly get clear in your minds is that if you are new to profiling or order flow um, or new to my style of trading or Peter's style of trading, uh, what you need to understand is that even though we might use the same tools, we, we may use them in different ways. We might just use different phrases and different words, but actually mean the same thing. And that, that's why I think for the next four weeks, you will, you will sort of see that where Peter will say things and I will say things, which we're pretty much trying to explain the same thing, but in a slightly different way. But the major benefit of that, of course, is that Sometimes the way that I explain it may not hit home for you, meaning you won't get that light bulb moment, but then Peter may explain it in such a way where you do. It might be the other way around where Peter explains it and you don't get that light bulb moment and I explain it and you do. Um, what I've found is that most people getting into profiling order flow firstly, um, tend to follow a pretty similar path. They go through um, Jim Dolden's book, Mind Over Markets, uh, the style of my book, um, style of my own markets. I read them, the theory's great, wasn't very practical, um, didn't really tell me how to use it, it just told me why it's so great, which I found was a bit of a problem um, because if it's so great, why don't you show me how to use it? Um, you know, I've, I've now got excited about using it all, but there's nothing in those books to show, okay, well, this is how you actually use it to take a trade. So it was a great story and I love the idea of profiling and I love the idea of auction market theory, but I just didn't know how to apply what sounded great. So I decided to 
rather than try to learn a completely different style of trading, just incorporate it with what I was already doing. And this is where the stage analysis comes in and the use of Fibonacci retracement extensions, um, the footprints and the way that I use them. And I, I'll show you how, I, you can read the same stuff on a market dollar footprint on jigsaw tools. I'll show people in the room, I'll show them on a, uh, a basic price ladder dom. Um, if you know what you're looking for, you can pretty much read it on any, uh, any tool that breaks down volume at price. Okay, any charting package, and these days that's pretty much everything. Um, every charting provider out there now has put pretty much uh, introduced the the capability of volume profiling. Um, but when I got into profiling, there was only one piece of software, uh, Market Dollar and Investor RT. Investor RT was basically um, a little bit more in the background back then. I think they've become a bit more popular with FT seventy one and some other people using it. So um, I've always been a user of Market Delta since two thousand and four. I think they launched in two thousand three. So I was one of the first users. And it's come a long way since then. But then Pedo introduced me to the Jigsaw tool, which is very unique. And I'll show you some of the things that I see in that. Um, and actually with the Aux uh, Auction Vista uh, tool with, with the uh, visual display now, it, there's some very interesting patterns that I, that I will share with you, not in today's session, but in the next one. Um, and so let's get into this. Um, so basically I've labeled this, this presentation, understanding the market without being right. The whole reason behind that was, I want you guys to understand that you can know the market, you can know the market environment, you can know what you're looking for, and you might feel very confident with that. You totally believe in the idea, but you may be wrong, okay? So that doesn't make you wrong with your style of trading or what you thought. It just makes the outcome didn't work out. That the, the outcome at that particular time, on that particular trade, that particular day, it didn't work out, okay? So one of the things you'll realize in trading, without a doubt, you're gonna suffer what some people call losses. I don't call them losses because I don't use the word loss. Um, I call it an expense or cost of doing business. So that's what I label it as and I changed that language a long, long time ago. But one thing that I think is critical, it doesn't matter how you trade, is that you don't emotionally associate yourself and your self-image or your ego with the result or the outcome of the trade, the day or the week or whatever it may be. Um, so that is quite difficult for many because they look for a result and an outcome to define whether they did it right or not. So they will take a trade and if it doesn't work out, they think, okay, well, it must have been wrong. Or they take a trade and it works out, they must have been right. Which is actually wrong because if you take a trade outside of your plan and completely against what you decided to do before you took the trade, so you made a plan, but you decided to take a trade, but you got paid for it, that's a bigger mistake than actually trading your plan and not getting paid for it because you're being rewarded for making mistakes. So I firstly would sort of highlight the fact um, that it's important to have a certain kind of mindset. So I'm gonna talk a bit about that firstly. And um, also this disassociation with results and outcomes is also gonna be, become critical, um, just like as it is with any other business. No other business invests in a, a business and calls themselves a loser because they didn't make money on one day. Trading is a business without a doubt. So treat it as a business, don't take it personal. So we'll start off with that. So let's get into it. So disclaimer, I'm not going to read through it because I'm sure you guys have seen it many, many times. So just to say that there is risk involved in trading futures and my opinions, um, recommendations are subject to change at any time. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, the following information expression my opinions and is provided for educational purposes only. So if you decide to use it, do so at your own risk, but make sure you understand it firstly. Okay, so... Firstly, I talk a lot about this, the passive mindset, and a lot of the time I don't think people realize what I actually mean. I just sort of get a nod of a head and say, yeah, 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 uh, but they don't really get it. Um, and the reason I say a passive mindset is because most people are so full of knowledge. Okay, and I used to be very similar in the fact that it was like, we're taught to learn, 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 read, 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 watch, watch webinars, seminars, take notes. This is a typical schooling system that we pretty much all come from. Listen, learn, take notes. Go to a lecture at university, listen, learn, take notes. Learn the notes, review the notes, okay? Then try to process it and then apply. Now in trading, that becomes a big issue because if you've been doing that for a few years, your head's just full up with so much crap, you'd not use it. So there's a lot of traders in this industry, especially independent retail traders, and the reason really behind that is because professional trading firms don't really teach a lot to their traders before they go live. 
the way they keep them in the business and the way they typically succeed is by min ma uh, minimizing their risk, by managing their risk, putting a risk limit on their account, uh, which is something that I'll talk about later, uh, which is a service that I provide for mindful traders um, with clearing through uh, a, a, a prop firm, uh, well, a, a FCM that typically caters for prop firms, uh, EDNF Man and also Merrick Spectrum. So those are the clearing firms typically for pretty much any European prop firm, probably mostly around the world as well. So, um, so there's major benefits to that I can discuss a little bit later, but I want to highlight the fact it's not about how much you know, it's not about how clever you think you are or how intelligent you think you are. And actually, if you know too much, you probably are gonna be your own worst enemy. So what I'm trying to get at here is it doesn't matter how much you try to learn about a subject or a topic like profiling, order flow, etc. More information doesn't necessarily mean better. If you can understand like a basic concept, the basic concepts of profiling, for example, that I explained today and order flow, which I'll explain in the next one, you are better off. I mean, I often say I could have wrote a book on uh, profiling and order flow and it would be like two pages because I just there's no point. The rest of it is just bullshit. It's just fluff. It's padding. You don't need it. You don't need to know the terminology, the acronyms, okay? Maybe just to sort of understand what somebody's talking about, but I just got a TPO, BPO, uh, TPOC, VPOC, IB, initial balance, imbalance, balance. Why do you have to change it from sideways to trend, sideways and trending or breakout? You know, everyone was okay with sideways and trending. All of a sudden they have to change sideways to balance, trending to imbalanced. Um, so they're just labels. The labels change, the market's the same, auction process is always there. Um, so a lot of fluff and a lot of new terminology comes around and people think, oh, this is interesting. Now I'm becoming smarter, I'm becoming more intelligent, more clever, I know more than anybody else because I learn more about this, this particular tool, market profile, and I know so much, I've read so many books, etc. But the thing is, knowledge doesn't lead to uh, um, more, better results in any shape or form. Um, unless it's applied. So you're better off having just like a very basic understanding and applying that, which is pretty much what I stripped it down to in the end with profiling. And I realized pretty much most of the stuff that I've had to go through, 95% of it, it's just fluff, right? So, and most of you guys probably have to do the same as well. I, I often say if I go back to the same chart that I had when I first started trading, I will trade that successfully now and much better than I did back then. Um, because it's not the markets or the tools that you're using that are really changing or you know your, your strategy, your tools are not gonna make you a better trader magically. Like people buy systems, you know, it used to be systems and then it became, okay, well, indicators. And then it became, okay, well, indicators don't work, systems don't work, let's use profiles. Let's use order flow. Okay, well, market dollars an order flow tool, let's use that, that must fix my execution. That will sort out my issues with mistiming trades. Okay, or let's try Jigsaw now because that's a bit more sophisticated. That's going to fix my solution. That's going to be my solution to my core trading skills. And in the end, people don't realize they're actually doing the same thing that they did with going from system to system to system, from order flow tool to order flow tool to order flow tool. If you can't trade a depth of market, a price adder, you're not going to be able to trade with the Jigsaw tool. You're not going to be able to trade with the market total footprints. Some people say, is OFA better? Is Jigsaw better? This better? Look, if you can't understand it and use all of them, it doesn't matter which one you buy, it's not gonna help, right? So this is what me and Peter are sort of <laughs> gonna to try to get into here, is make it very simple for you to understand and apply the basics. Apply the basics and then keep going with that. Okay, you don't need to know more necessarily, you just need to understand certain things better, right? Um, just want a quick pause here, Peter. I just wanna make sure that everything's running smoothly here before I carry on, just a quick pause here, sound, visuals, etc. Yeah, all good, okay, excellent. So passive mindset, I say this quite a lot and I found myself sort of unconsciously saying this a lot when I was teaching, uh, especially one-to-one -one coaching students because I do do a lot of work on the psychology. Not sure if you guys know, but I'm also a certified neuro-linguistic programming therapist since 2015, master practitioner since 2016, but also timeline therapist. And I do a lot of, um, I've med been meditating for over 10 years every day without, without a fail, I meditate every morning, every evening. Um, and that's been probably the best tool for me in terms of um, understanding not only myself, but also the markets. I want to talk about a vacuum in the mind in a moment. And really you do develop that through um, meditation um, and, and just being more self-aware and mindfulness techniques. So that, that is the tool to get there. 
Okay, to really understand the market, you need to watch, listen, okay? Listen to the market. And, and probably say, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's obvious, right? But do you really listen to the market? Because most people come in with a plan and they're gonna force that upon the market. They're not listening to the market at times. They're not really understanding what the market's telling them. Like for example, I wait, wait very patiently until the market comes into what I call an engagement zone. I'm not even picking up the mouse to my trading platform, which is a separate PC, until I'm in that zone. And it's an exact price range. I would say like 84s to 88s, trading there if they lift off as I'm in. Hitting the bids here between 90 to 96, okay, 90 to 96 up to that area, I'm gonna look for, so as to hit the bids aggressively in that area, I wanna get in. So I know exactly which prices need to trade and how the market needs to get there before it gets there. That might be like an hour, two hours in advance, it might be a day in advance, it might be a few minutes in advance. But without a doubt, as human beings, you always see what you do before you do it, okay? Now what that is, is basically subconsciously, unconsciously, there's always an image in your mind. Uh, some people say, I can't visualize. I can't see anything in my mind's eye. I can't see it. I can't visualize. I try to do the visualization, visualization exercise, I can't visualize. Okay, you do visualize every day. Otherwise you won't be able to live your life, okay? The fact that you get up in the morning and brush your teeth and have a shower, um, assuming that you're pretty clean, um, <laughs> which I hope so, um, you're gonna see that before you do it. Like if you decide right now, if you've got a glass of drink on your desk or whatever, um, you know, you've got a door to your office, wherever you are, if you focus on that cup of coffee or mug of tea or whatever it is, okay, or glass on your table or the door to walk out the office, when you bring your attention to it, in your mind, even if it's for a split second, you're gonna see a picture. It might be a picture, it might be still, it might be panoramic, it might be framed, it might be a movie, it might be a little clip, a movie clip, but in, in maybe one or two seconds, you're gonna see something. Okay, now some people are not aware of that, but it is definitely happening. It's impossible for you to do anything without seeing it first. Okay, that is one of the ways you understand how to do something, because you have to remind yourself firstly. So when people do things in trading that they're not supposed to, a lot of it does come down to, firstly, the clarity in the plan, okay? And I talk about that a lot. I, I, a lot of, lot of focus on mindset. Whilst well, I'm a certified therapist and I focus a lot on uh, trader psychology and peak performance, first thing I always do is make sure somebody understands the market and they're building a good plan. Because if they're not doing that, it's pointless having a good mindset and building discipline. It's, you, you can't have discipline without a clear plan. And I'll show people how I plan. You know, and I'll show you some examples later. It's not just support resistance. It's not lines on a chart. That's not good enough. That's what everyone does. What people tend to do is like they put lines on a chart like this. Okay, I just need to download some data for today. They put lines on the chart. Let's get onto crude oil here. So they put lines on a chart like this and they say, okay, if it gets there, I'm gonna start reading order flow. So then they go to the flat footprints like this and read order flow. As soon as the sellers hit the bids, they're in short. That's not good enough, okay? If, if it was that simple, don't you think the the multi-million multi -million dollar, billion dollar companies would have introduced um, some kind of black box system that could have taken advantage of just trading off low volume nodes on sellers hitting bids or buyers lifting offers. You know, you gotta wake up to that. That's just stupid. That's ludicrous if you think that's good enough as a strategy, okay? Maybe for a couple of ticks here and there, and then you get some guys which just put orders on the level. They say, my levels are good, yeah, they're gonna hold. Yeah, maybe for two or three ticks, but you, or maybe a little bit more, okay? But pretty much like even profiling levels, they're good, but, when you start looking at volume profile, there's a lot of noise and you've got to filter that out. I mean, there's a lot of levels here. Which ones do you choose to trade on? So I use a very simple um, concept called an auction failure pattern, which I'll show you guys in a little while. Very, very simple, but it's very, very effective. But people don't wait for it. And then they wonder why their timing is off. Now, if you're not waiting for the right place and the right time, it doesn't matter what order flow tool you use. You know, like we're talking about, you know, Jigsaw here. It's a fantastic tool, but if you don't know when to use it, Peter quite often says, it's the icing on the cake. I often say the same, it's the icing on the cake. If you haven't got a cake, you've just got icing. There's no good without the cake, right? You need the cake first. So this is what this foundational um, webinar initially here was about having, building a cake first. Having something to put the icing on. Because without that, it's no good, right? So, you know, then, um, you know, some people just look at footprint and they're sitting there or looking at the jigsaw and the platform going up, down, up, down, up, down. And what they, what they find themselves, they get hypnotized. They get hypnotized. The market's got them now. It's, got, it's pulling your strings. It's got you by the, you know, the uh, loony, the goonies, uh, the, the, you know, the B-A-L-L-S. Okay, so it's got you. The market's got you. They've got you. Now your subconscious, unconscious, if you're not 
understanding how that's functioning and what you're doing. Because if you're trying to make logical choices, decisions, if you're trying to make choices, decisions based upon intellect and what you think is right and what you think is, you know, based upon that, it's, it's not going to happen. Because now you're in a, once the market opens and you start trading and you get sucked in, you're pretty much an autopilot. Meaning that you're going to be reacting majority of the time either to the market and what you see or your plan. Now, I prefer to only react to my plan, okay? And then within that, I use intuition, um, I use um, a passive mindset, um, I listen, I watch, and I look for certain things to happen. But I watch the charts um, from a perspective of psychology, meaning that I'm not looking at charts, I'm not looking for patterns, I'm not looking for setups. I'm watching a chart and thinking this is people, a collective conscious, making choices and decisions. I'm trying to figure out when someone's going to step, step wrong somewhere, when someone's going to get trapped, when someone's going to, well, collective at least, where, so, where people are going to make mistakes, where people are not going to find the opportunity that we perceive as, as individuals that have the passive mindset. Because the market's talking to you. It's a collective conscious. It's almost like a person. You have to build rapport with it. Okay, um, Only forming opinions and beliefs based upon auction theory logic, which is something that I do, okay? The market is an auction, always will be an auction, because these are prerequisites for the belief structure. If you wanna use some of the stuff that I teach, and you have to know this, and you have to believe it. If you don't believe it, um, you firstly have to understand it. So I wanna break down into that firstly. Well, market is always, it's always been an auction process, right? From the times it was in the, um, in the pit, okay? Yes, the pits are closing, but the market's still an auction. You know, we have the locals in the pit, the institutional uh, traders on uh, outside the pit, they're trading with the guys, the locals in the pit. The locals in the pit trade with each other for a few ticks here and there. But there's an offer, I'm offering 1800. Okay, well there's a buyer, he wants it. 1800, I've got 10 at 18, 1801. Okay, there's a buyer, there you have it. I've got 20 here at 1802, you as a buyer. Okay, you can have it. 1803, okay, there's another buyer, there I have this and they take it. All right, so now as long as they keep taking my higher prices, I'm gonna keep selling to higher prices. Because that's my job, to sell at higher prices if I've got inventory to offload, right? That's the local, okay? Then this is the market and how it started, right? Now, um, as a seller, okay, now we have the opportunity to sell, of course, but it's the same thing in the sense that, um, you know, if somebody else is gonna be looking for an opportunity, if you're now uh, seeing lower prices being advertised, Okay, now there's buyers on the bid. Buyers are on the bid. Let's say again, you know, we, now let's choose a different price. 1750. Okay, 1750, that's the bid price. We've got 200 contracts sitting there on the bid. If I want to sell 1750, because I believe the market's going to go to 1720, I'm going to take 1750. I'm going to hit into their bids. All right? And if there's more aggressive sellers, it might be me again, it might be someone else. 1750, 1749. Okay, hit the bid. Okay, we take it 1748. Well, Okay, if somebody comes in, takes out all the bids again. Now, firstly, there's always a buy for every seller. So in that sense, there's always, it's a, a zero-sum game, meaning that you can only sell into a bid if there's a contract there to take. Okay, so you want 10 contracts on the bid, there has to be 10 contracts on the bid to short into. If you want to buy 10 contracts on the offer, there has to be 10 contracts on the offer. Now, most markets are liquid enough to have that. You can only get a little bit of slippage if you're trading too big or too large on some of the more volatile markets, but... For the majority of us, liquid products, I mean, I do trade crude oil, but I typically trade four or five lots now. Um, nothing much bigger than that. Maybe at most, you know, a, a 10 lot. Uh, but the liquidity is there. You'll get a little bit of a slippage here and there. Um, but I don't give a shit about that one tick. One of the biggest mistakes I started to make when I was a trader, I learned this idea of um, limit orders. Put a bid in, because I want to buy the bid. I don't want to lose a tick by buying the offer. Okay? Um, it took me about two and a half years to figure out how stupid I was. I was selling the market on an offer when it's already taken out the bids. How stupid is that? Now, some of you guys are probably saying, well, what's wrong with that? If you can't see that, why that is stupid to offer the market when it's taken out the bids, you know, and you're wondering why you don't get filled, you know, that, then you've got something to really look into in just basic understanding of market dynamics. If you can't understand why it makes more sense to hit into the bid when the market's initiating and taking out bids, because I get this all the time. Guys are like, well, I, I take the trade and in simulation I get used to get filled, but when I went live, I put a two lot on the offer and the market just goes off without me. But when I get 
when I get it wrong, it fills me because I put the offer in and it moves up and I get stopped out. All right? That is something that is so stupid that it's it's not. It, it took me a while to figure out. So this is what I'm saying to you guys because somebody should have told me that. I didn't know until I went into prop trading. I go, okay, wait a minute. I can just go in that market. I don't have to give a shit about that tick. Okay. Um, now, especially on my volatile markets, who cares if you get 49.71 on, uh, on crude oil right now, uh, 49.70? I don't care. I just want to get in. I'd rather have the trade than, um, than, than you know, make an extra tick. You know, so, you know, that's stuff you've got to figure out as well. You know, so scalping might be a little bit more important. So firstly, passive mindset. This is like what I say is, is, is firstly understanding the market and understand, look, it's telling you. It, it is a collective conscious. You're not just watching a chart. You're not just watching water flow. You're not just looking at volume profiles. This is a living, breathing organism, right? And, you know, think a bit like a person. If you don't listen to the person, you're always trying to figure out who that person is and you're trying to judge them all the time. Most traders come into the marketplace as uh, like they do with most people. They judge people. Look at someone and say, this guy does this. He's got this. He's got that. He's a dick. Most people come into the markets in the same way, how they live life. They judge people. They judge markets. They're trying to force their own opinions and judgments upon a market. I believe you should go higher, crude oil. Why the fuck aren't you listening to me? You know, it's a it's like a person. Listen to the market. Build rapport with the market. Build relationship. Understand how these markets think. Every market has a character, a personality. Right? Every single one. And you need to understand that personality. You know, think of it like this. If you're trading 10 different markets, it's like having a relationship with 10 different people. You can commit to one and have a very long-lasting good relationship. Or you can just fuck around with 10. Right, you get that? Okay, so now uh, the charts, as I said, are it's not though it's thought and belief patterns of the collective conscious. Okay, of the collective conscious, it's everyone making thoughts, decisions, choices, and yes, that includes computers, the the computers, because most of them are just market making models. The computers are not against you. Most of them are actually providing the liquidity that you need. You know, this is another thing people don't understand in the industry. The black box systems, a lot of these algos. They're providing liquidity. They get paid for providing liquidity. They're not looking to buy lower and sell higher for profit. They get paid by the exchange to provide orders, limit orders. That's why the order flow is chopping and changing on the depth so quickly. Most of it's not real, but that's the job. Look at the mini DAX. The mini DAX launched last September. It's got more volume on the depth than the big DAX, but yet the big DAX does more volume at the end of the day. Because the market making is where the high frequency trading systems are. They're not there to, you know, they, they haven't got, they don't give, care about you. You know, they're just providing liquidity. Now, some people say, oh, the high frequency trading systems are taken over day trading, it's over. It's not. The, the dynamics might have changed a little bit on the order book, but um, if anything, it's a, it's a good thing. There's more liquidity. They're providing liquidity. They get paid for volume from the exchanges. Okay, you need to understand the, the objective of a high frequency trading system, all right? So the market will always try to establish value from multiple perspectives, meaning that there's value everywhere. People say, okay, well, I've got value here, I've got value here. What do I do? I'm confused. Well, make a choice. Which one's valuable to you? Value is like, like you have values in life. What's more important to you? Time, family, money, kids, cars, whatever. You apply value to something, you focus on that because that's important to you. Right? So what is important to you? So when you look at value on a market, okay, you find value first. That's my first job. If I don't have value, I haven't got a clue. I need to know what I believe this market is worth within a time frame that's good enough to reach my objectives. Meaning that, for example, a value area is spanning over like six months is no good to me as a day trader. It's good to know, but a value area may be spanning over like two or three days or two weeks, probably interesting to me as a day trader because it's value within the context of my objectives. Right, so people forget about this. Most people, again, come into day trading um, with profiling um, with the daily profiles. That's all we had, firstly. Um, now, that changed probably around August 2011. I, I even used to say this stuff. You know, one of the things that we might learn is that 80% of the time, the market's balanced intraday. That was before August 2011. Actually, it started to change from, like, sort of the flash crash, May 2010, coming into August 2011. But I was using profiling before that. So we... 
uh, myself and others like Peter and many other traders that have been trading with profiles for a long time has already evolved from that. But what's happening is people are reading old books. They are listening to old seminars, and webinars. This is why I removed a lot of my old ones. They're not some you know, the basics are relevant, but there's there's certain things that have changed. Market dynamics, for example, you don't have the sideways balance day eighty percent of the time now. The trend day is more than eighty percent of the time. Meaning multiple distributions. Now you read a book. It's written ten years ago. That was for the market ten years ago. You know this this is the problem with a lot of people going to like Starter Mind, Jim Dolan stuff right now. That stuff. I mean, Jim Dolan's obviously updating stuff. I don't know what he's saying right now, but he wasn't even teaching online before. But you know, great stuff, and I think you know I've learned a lot from that. But the thing is, at the same time, um, you have to adapt, and I'm pretty sure he probably is as well. Okay, otherwise he wouldn't be, you know, have the level of understanding which he did to write such a great book in the first place. Okay, but you always need to understand the ways we teach, the what we do, what we do today, what we, me and Peter teach you this month. The foundational concepts aren't going to change, but some of the details may. But if you got the foundational concepts, the details don't matter. You don't, you don't need to know the details, right? It's like if you know someone as a person, as a human being, a friend or, you know, in a relationship, if you know them well, the details don't matter. It doesn't matter whether they're, um, you know, whether, what they say or what they do. It's about just understanding that person, you know? So, same thing with the market. So, the market will always try to establish value from multiple perspectives, meaning that not everyone has the same perspective of uh, value as you. And remember, value is an unconscious thing meaning that traders will trade around value even though they don't want to because every choice and decision is made based upon whether, um, at least with outright trades, if you're gonna buy, typically, most traders that are trading outright products, not spreads, think that market's gonna go higher. That's the only reason they're gonna buy. You're not gonna buy a market because you think, okay, it's gonna go short, I'm gonna buy, okay? Uh, you know, how many of you would buy a market if you think it's gonna go lower? Probably not, unless it's a hedge, all right? With something else. I mean, how many of you are going to actually short the market if you think it's going to go higher? You're not going to do it. The reason you think it's going to go sh um, yeah, it's going to go lower, and the reason you want to short is because you have a concept of value, meaning that you think it's going to go lower, so the price is going to change. So if you think the price is going to move lower or higher, it doesn't matter. You have a concept of value, whether you know that or not, because you're valuing that market to buy or sell into that market based upon a perception it should be higher or lower. So you already have a concept of value. So this is what I mean, value is built into the market unconsciously. It, it, it's a, uh, but when we look at the charts, it's a collective conscious, it's beautiful because it's so organized, you know? Create a vacuum in the mind that allows the market to fill your level of understanding. What I mean by that, you know, the mind, um, when we look at the charts, okay, most people look at the charts and try to figure it out. They're trying to figure it out, it's like a puzzle. It's like a, it's, it's like a puzzle um, and they're trying to figure it out based upon logic and what they've learned and if they can't figure out, they get more knowledge. If they still can't figure out, they get more knowledge. And what happens is they get nowhere. What you have to do, understand the basics, like what I wanna show you now and what I've just said, and then empty your mind. Then let the market talk to you. Let it show you what you've already understood. And let it fill your mind with the rest of the knowledge, okay? Now, some people don't get that, Okay, but you have to see it. You have to do it. You'll get it. Okay, I probably couldn't have explained that 10 years ago, but now I know it and I live it. Okay, now build rapport with the market just as you do with people, right? Okay, now discipline. Um, well, firstly, discipline is, I've I, I broken it down into these the four C's, right? Discipline is a result of focusing on the four C's. Okay, people start reading books, they start doing plans, they start um, trying to meditate for like one day every two months, which ain't gonna work. Um, or they try this and they try that and they just, you know, I, I've got so much shit I've accumulated over the years. Um, you don't need a lot. This addiction to knowledge and education and getting more information is, is the biggest problem for most of you. It was for me. Less is more and do more with less. Right, discipline is a result of focusing on the four C's. Firstly, clarity. Become very clear with what is a trade for you. Become very clear with why that makes sense to you. Be very clear, okay? I had the other day someone call me up and say, look, I'm short the British pound US dollar. Shall I hold into it? I don't even know why you took the trade. How can I tell you whether to hold it or not? 
you know? So it's just like that should never happen. I've never ever took advice from anyone on a trade. Never ever took a trade because somebody said, buy, I'm gonna buy, and just jump on their back. Okay, you have leaders and followers in this world. You're either a follower or you're a leader. And in trading, the reality is, if you're not a leader and you're not doing your own thing, you're gonna be part of that majority. Okay, the majority that, you know, it's not just trading, it's 95% of small businesses fail. You know, 95% of people, you know, the, the, you know, the zombie nation. So, you know, you got clarity first is a massive thing, you know, clarify your process. And I show people and I say, look, I do this, I do this, do this. Like, what the fuck, there's so much structure there. Like you got PMA, you got the visions, you got a peak performance uh, tracking sheet, where I measure myself, I, I ask myself, how much energy do I have? Not to 100%. How much discipline do I, how much belief and confidence do I have today? What's my level of fear, anxiety? Is it lower than 20%? If so, I'm good. What's my level of, level of, uh, uh, I'll show you guys this actually. What's my attitude like? What's my focus like? All right, so I've got all this stuff anyway. I've got loads of stuff that I use and I've de developed a lot of this myself purely because I needed it. And the reason you need this stuff is because you need to focus on doing your job well. And if you're not clear with what you're supposed to be doing in the first place, you're not going to be able to do it well. It's as simple as that. It's, it really is. All right, so there it is. Give me a second, just wait for this load up. That's done so long. All right, so look at this. It's just on the other screen, let me just pull it across. Now I developed this quite a while ago, okay? Um, I'll be happy to send it to you guys. You know, a little bonus for you. I do give away a lot of stuff. I'm not a stingy bastard. I do give away a lot of stuff and I, I like to help. Um, you know, you don't have to pay for everything. Um, so basically what you got here, peak condition tracker. So I do this every morning. Okay, this is just a template. I said, look, I need to do technical analysis of myself, not the markets. This is more important to me. I need to analyze myself, not to mark. It, analysis of the markets became useless to me unless I knew what I was like. So I started to say, look, I wake up in the morning, what's my energy like? Zero to hundred percent. I have to be of over 80. If it's not, actually I wanna be 90 to hundred really. But the only time I'm physical condition, because that affects everything. Look, if you're knackered, you haven't slept properly, you're 70% on, you know, in reference to what you normally like, you're probably not gonna be focused. You're probably not gonna have a lot of belief and confidence. You're not gonna have a lot of inner peace and therefore the knock on effect, right? So energy is massive, right? This is why I say, look, focus on about two or three time window, two or three hour time window. Don't sit there for 10 hours a day trading, okay? Your focus, your attitude, your belief and confidence, your energy is gonna um, uh, diminish and therefore your behaviors would too. Because your state, your state of being, not just state of mind, your state is, is massive. Physiology is massive, right? And then focus attitude, grade it, zero to 100%. Belief and confidence. You can actually change these labels. These are things that I track. Inner peace, right? Uh, PMA visions awareness. How aware am I, am I of my uh, 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 my visions? Fear and anxiety. Why right? I measure all this? This is the only thing that should drop. Fear and anxiety, right? And then after a while, it does uh, develop like a graph. And then after trading, I do this. What was my patience like? What was my discipline like? How how well did I adapt? Was I trading emotionally? Okay, that should be lower than 20 10 percent ideally. Entry execution, risk management, profit maximization, stock management. Okay, what I started to realize, and now all my one-to-one -one coaching students use this and track it, what I started to realize is whenever they have issues here, because one of the things as a neuro-linguistic programming therapist, um, and also, you know, just a person living life and living the concepts, I've learned that your behavior and your actions are always based upon your state. Okay, you do things based upon your state. You would typically do things better if your state is better. For example, if you're depressed and you're sad and you don't have any energy, you're knackered, your trading is more than likely gonna be shit. All right? Now, if you're energized, you've been in the gym, you feel good, you've you know, been eating well, your diet, nutrition, everything's good, you've been sleeping well, meditating, clearing the mind, like an athlete, you know, getting ready for the game. 
You know, Usain Bolt does a 10 second sprint in the Olympics and trains a whole year for 10 seconds. Yet traders trade every day and they can't spend one hour on themselves. And I'll say this in general, because I actually wanted to our mindset work um, when I traded part time, when I used to work in banking, Citibank, uh, Lehman Brothers and Citibank. And then I used to come home, I used to trade the mini Dow, uh, seven to nine o'clock, but 10 to 11 o'clock, or 9.30 to 11 o'clock, I used to do mindset work. And I just started that. I focused on watching seminars, reading audiobooks, books, meditating, um, learning about NLP stuff. I was doing whatever I could to focus on my mindset. One and a half hours, two hours, at least an hour. I did that every day for about two years, eight months before I went full time and I carried on, of course. But it got to the point where I went downstairs to watch TV I couldn't sit downstairs to watch TV. I had a niche to go upstairs and work on myself into my office because I was wasting time. Now, some people say to me, like, I don't have time for 10 minutes to do meditation. I don't have time to fill in this spreadsheet. I don't have time to do a journal. Yet you have time to watch EastEnders for two hours or some kind of program like Breaking Bad or Prison Break or whatever it might be. You know, you can sit there for three, four hours and watch TV with no motivation whatsoever. Right, so you know what's more important to you, really? You know, we're talking about value. You know, so so these are some of the things you got to do, right? So now, clarity, confidence. Firstly, confidence is going to come from having clarity. If you know and understand clearly what you're supposed to be doing, you're going to have more confidence in being able to achieve it. Right? If you don't know why you bought a market and why you believe the market should be higher, you're not going to have any confidence. Therefore, snatching up profits inevitable. You know, the rest is going to be a knock-on effect and you're never going to make money with that. If you don't have clarity, you're not going to have confidence. Without confidence, there's no trading results that are going to be beneficial whatsoever. Courage comes from the ability to be resilient based upon having a good story. But if you haven't got the story and you haven't got the right level of belief and understanding, courage isn't there. You're scared. Doubt, fear and anxiety is not a problem. It's there to tell you you're not ready to be in this position what you're in. So some people say, I have doubt, fear, and anxiety, I'll get out the trade. I said, why do you doubt the trade? I said, I have doubt, fear, and anxiety. I gave up a long time ago trying to eliminate these emotions and realized as long as I'm a human being, I'm always going to have those emotions. Doubt, fear, and anxiety, always going to be there. They're, they're tools. Fear exists because you don't know what's going to happen next. Okay, I mean, You've got to get okay with that. But anxiety, doubt, doubt, doubt should not be the source of fear. If you have fear based upon doubt or anxiety based upon doubt, you don't know enough to be in that trade. It's, it's, like, it's like doing a business deal without knowing why you did it. A trade is the same. If you know why you did it and you have a good story, the confidence will be there. Your confidence needs to be 80% plus. The doubt can be 10, 20%. As long as your belief and confidence is greater than the doubt and the fear and the anxiety, that's cool. It doesn't have to be eliminated, but your belief and confidence always need to be greater. And if it's not, you need to figure out how to improve your level of belief and confidence. And sometimes that starts with uh, a better understanding um, and also uh, the planning. How well do you plan? How clear is your plan? Again, I show you guys, when I get to the execution side of things, you'll see how I plan. It's very, very clear. It's impossible really for me to make a mistake with the way that I plan to get into a trade. It's just, it just ain't gonna happen. I'm just not gonna take a trade outside my plan because it's so, I can't go wrong with the way that I plan. And if you, if I do, something ain't right. You know, something ain't right. And I, that's not why it with me, not my system or my strategy because I, my planning is, is fine. The only reason I won't believe in my trade and stay with it is because I have fear or doubt. And fear and doubt only exist because you're scared of something. And what are you scared of? What are you afraid of? Is it the loss or is it the fact you don't know why you took the risk? You know, um, commitment. Okay, Commi commitment is being committed to a vision. I talk about visions. It's like, okay, satellite navigation, I'm going from Chicago to New York. New York, postcode, that's where I'm going. I'm committed to that. I don't care what traffic's on the way, I don't care where I have to stop on, whoever comes in the way, I'm going there. 
A vision is a destination. So a trade, for me, most importantly, has to have a vision, a destination, rather than a place to get in. Yeah, the place to get in is, it, it, I don't care whether I get on that coach, that bus, that train, halfway, quarter of the way to the destination. As long as it's going to the destination, I don't care where I get in as long as it's worthwhile. And in terms of trading, meaning that it's got enough reward for me. Okay, so I need to know how much reward I want for each market, what's good enough, what's not good enough, is there enough distance left to the destination? If there is, I'll get in. Uh, one of the things you don't really need to do is pick tops and bottoms. Um, so market volume profiling simplified, very, very simple. Three fundamental elements. Okay, you get this, you can figure out all the other terminology, uh, TPOs and, uh, you know, it's all nice to, to know, like, you know, the unfinished business, etc. cetera. Um, you know, um, uh, there's a, uh, there's a, a week high, week low, etc. There's, you know, some people do statistics. They go well into the statistics. Uh, you know, back tested this, and this rotation should happen this many times. Um, you know, this the high of this uh, this kind of day on this market based on the last three years should break um, on a Wednesday uh, seventy eight percent of the time or fifty eight percent of the time. Who cares? Okay. Now, if it helps you, great. If it gives you more belief and confidence, great. Okay. Sometimes people ask me, how do you know this, and how do you um, stick with that? I said, I don't care, I don't need numbers. As long as I think it's more likely versus not, that's the only probability I need. I don't care if that's 51%, 71%, 80%, 90 As long as it's more likely versus not, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't care about statistics because those are always based upon the past. I'm more interested in what's happening right now and executing my plan and listening to the market now. So back tests and stuff like that, it's, just like trading performance, like I've traded, I'm not making nowhere near as much as I was in 2012. No one is, really. Some might, some some people might be, but most people are not. Most traders are not. You know, I'm pretty clear with that. And that's nothing to do with the fact that I'm not as good or my strategy is not as good. The market condition has changed. It's like saying to someone, okay, well, in the tech boom, you made so much money. How come you can't trade anymore? Because all you had to do back then was buy anything and you made money. It's like properties until 2008. Until the subprime mortgage crisis, everyone was killing it. But how many people got screwed back then? You know, so it's a, there is a market environment. There is a place that we're doing business with it. And there's always opportunity there without a doubt. And sometimes you have to change your perspectives. Like I've gone back into some shorter term trading on crude oil. Um, I've actually been seeing some stuff from um, the auction Vista stuff, which I'll show you guys, which is quite fascinating actually, because the it fits in very well with the auction failure patterns that I talk about. It's probably the opposite of what most of you guys are looking for actually. So that would be interesting for you. So firstly, price is the advertising mechanism, right? We all know that, okay? So the price is this, you know, let's just take, um, let's just duplicate this. So this is a crude oil chart. Okay, this is a Heiken Ashi chart. I've got various charts that I look at. I'm not gonna go too much into that today. Just wanna delete some of this. All right, so that basically we've got price now, okay? Well, firstly, price is there, and it's a good thing uh, to have price organized across time, okay? That's two-dimensional. We've got price and time. So we can see how price is organized and how it's been advertised over time. But price is the advertising mechanism. Um, most of us got into trading and price is king. Price is king. Price is the thing that we all... Price is an advertising mechanism. You know, it's like saying that Aston Martin DB9 is 100 grand or 150 grand. It's not, it's an Aston Martin DB9. It's not the price, right? It's, so it's like, you mean he like crude oil is 49.82. Price is not what crude oil is. That's the advertisement for this product right now. Do we wanna buy it? Do we wanna sell it? Everyone's gonna have a different opinion based upon what they believe. You're not ever really trading a system or a strategy unless you're a robot and you're just taking the green arrows and red arrows. I don't think you guys will be here if you are. Um, but if you are, you know, that's great. You know, I think if you're trading systems, automate it. The robot, the computer will do a much better job. But if you're not discretionary trading, you've got to make choices. Now, when we look at a chart like this, we have price and time. I could probably make an opinion based upon what I see here, because you can see balance without, firstly, you don't need a profile around that. Okay, you can see the balance area. Yeah, you guys can see where it's sideways, right? You got no, nobody here. I mean, you guys can start typing in if you like, but you guys can see um, the market was sideways here. Obviously, it's easier after the fact, right? 
But you can see it's consolidating here, right? You guys can see that. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that. Okay, so but how does it start? How does that start? How does it start? It starts with this, very simple. It starts with like this price ring just went down. How is a new range gonna develop there? Well, this price ring, it's pretty much there. 80, which is about here, to 120, which means it's gonna go back towards that high, just stop short of it or just above it, that's it. That is the beginning of balance, okay, and value. Typically, after the stall here, it's gonna go all the way back to the low, 80 to 120 percent and then it goes sideways and it says okay well if we found value so basically one of the key things that i do is find value before it's found okay like here it's a bit easier because the market's already sort of made a retracement back in the high typically i will find it before then because most people will see like a a, a, a presentation on finding value and trade value okay, yeah that's all well and good but you're not going to see value before it's there but that's the thing you can right you can uh, you can see where value is before it is. Okay, well, firstly, that price replacement is one thing. There's another thing, though. Okay, let me show you another another tool now. So if we look at this as a uh, composite profile. Let's put a composite profile on. Well, any profile, just put it on the chart and to turn it into composite profile, all we do is, I'm just going to use a default. All right, there it is. All right, so now we've got a composite profile. It's a little bit thin, so I'll thicken it up. And this is market data, by the way, guys. So that's market, uh, let's actually just use this one. It's already done. So I've already got a composite profile on this, okay? Now this is a shorter term chart, it's a five tick rank or hike and actually really doesn't matter what time period is to use, it's a personal choice um, and I will change them at times. So basically now you've got a composite profile on the right. Now what I've done here in this range, I've actually put a value out. And I use custom value. Typically, um, auction market three traders, volume profile traders, what they do is use um, TPO profiles, if anybody hasn't seen those before, it's a little bit like this. Uh, open. So traditional market profiles are like this, okay? Uh, TPO profile chart. All right, so that's a traditional TPO profile chart. not uh, filled in with data but it's got the letters and stuff so basically it's more time it's like letters develop a uh, baseball it used to be 30 minute brackets so every 30 minutes you'll get a new letter so it's quite slow for day trading it does give you an overview of what's going on it's it's, it's a little too smoothed out for me for day trading um that's, therefore i shifted to volume profiles because i had a volume profile next to the tp prof tp profile i had a volume profile on my uh depth of market price setter and i just thought look that's just that's just better for me. I see stuff from there. The TPO profile is taking way too long to develop. You know, I can see stuff to trade around based on past days, but I do want to see what the auction is doing today rather than basing today's trades based upon yesterday's auction and the auction before, etc. So it made a hell of a lot more sense to use a warning profile. Now, everything I do, I've got a reason why I do it. Whereas most people will say, well, I do it because this guy said, this is what I read and I'm going to do what he says. Uh, it's, it's like having a guru or something say, well, this is my guru, whatever he says I'm going to do, but I want to be like him one day. You'll never be the guru, you'll never be that person if you look up to them. You can't be someone as long as you keep calling them the leader and you're the follower. Okay? It's the same thing with this stuff. All right? I always say, look, this is my style. This is what I do. Understand it. Use it your way. That's what I did. Peter does it his way. The thing is here is... We're using tools, we're sharing information, we're sharing wisdom from experience. That's the thing me and Peter are doing here. But what I say at the same time, don't just use it the way that I say. Don't just use it and put it on your chart, but make it your own. Because the most important thing to be build belief and confidence is to do it your way. Because if you're always doing it somebody else's way, you will never totally believe in it. Because as much as I can try to explain things and Peter will try to explain things and I'm sure he'll back this up, You'll never really totally get us. You'll never really totally get the full understanding. We can only give snippets of the full, <laughs> of, of the understanding. Right, that's it. So you're never going to really fully get it. Get some of it and then make it your own. Internalize it, right? 
So this is, you know, composite profile, you've got some levels there as well, right? So now we've got volume profile on top. Okay, so now time has organized that data over time, right? Okay, price. Price has been organized over time. Typical, you know, 2D chart. Now volume has measured the success or failure. And this is very critical, okay? This is more important than any terminology. Volume measures the success or the failure of the price advertisement, right? If you get this, you can learn how to use a composite profile, a volume profile, anyway, in, in, anywhere. And that also it's gonna add to the way you understand order flow, because that is also volume at price. So volume, because remember, what is the purpose of any market? Facilitate trade, that's it. That's the most important objective. Why do they have firms which are investing millions and billions into market making high frequency trading systems to become market makers for futures? to provide the debt because they want to facilitate trade. Their job, their service, right? High frequency trading system, the exchanges, the, you know, the uh, futures carry, uh, clearing merchants is to facilitate trade. They want to give you the ability to take trades. That's it. So success in the sense of a market based upon the purpose being to provide the opportunity to trade. It's gotta be based upon where most people traded. So where has the most volume traded? That is a successful auction. Where is it failing to trade? That's unsuccessful, right? But the market as the auction process ebbs and flows from where it did trade and didn't trade, where it did trade and didn't trade, trying to figure out where it should trade next. That's it. <laughs> that is auction market theory in a nutshell. Well, so when you look at a profile now, it doesn't matter what profile it is, it doesn't matter what market. You see the low volume areas, you know that's where the market didn't want to trade in the past. But also, when you put the daily profile on, you can see where it does want to trade today and where it doesn't want to trade today, right? It's very simple. So if the market's job is to facilitate trade, firstly, it's logical, once it finds value, it's gonna trade around it for a little while until people think, wait a minute, it should be higher. Wait a minute, it should be seller. That's it. So, however, the, the great thing here is the market is always gonna find value because it needs to facilitate trade. Whilst, if you can highlight, this is the edge that I have and you guys can use it too. If you can highlight and find balance and value quite early, you can typically get two or three swings around that phase. Even like crude oil here, right? We had a swing here, we had, we had a nice range here. So we've got the intraday ranges, but look at this range here even for today. Bang, up, down, up, down. It's just like playing ping pong. Okay, you get your levels up and down. Now most people struggle with timing now. Now we're gonna get into this in the next webinars, right? But timing here is very, very simple if you use an auction failure pattern, okay? And it does go a little bit deeper because I use some confluence patterns. But for example here, I'm not gonna short 49.85, 49.96. There are levels to watch, absolutely. But what I would do now is say, I will wait for it to hold here. But my auction failure pattern is below 49.66. Now some people say, well, what about the 85 to 66 you're gonna miss out? You're gonna, you, you could take that profit. I don't care, try it. If you try to get 49.85, 96, you will see those profits are not gonna exist anyway. It will feel great if you get the 96 and it goes lower, or the 85 goes lower. But well, I prefer to be a little bit more sure that it's going to 49.31 after the auction failure pattern. 49.66 and below, it's already showed me that it's given up on the range above, it's coming back to the range below. A no-brainer. Now, that's where my clarity came from, that's where my confidence come from, from that understanding. I take that trade and believe in it, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna snatch at profits because I understand why it should go back down there. But if you look at that as a chart or just listen to me and think it's gonna go lower because I said so, it's not good enough. All right? So let's carry on. Okay, so now, just um, profile, just really simplify this. I've, I've gone a little bit over here, but I'm just gonna sort of finish off in the next five, sort of 10 minutes. Hopefully that's okay, Peter, let me know. Then we do some Q&A, so I'll probably about 10 minutes to finish off here with the presentation. Um, all right, so reading and using volume profiles. Firstly, step one, very, very simple, find value to focus upon. Where is it you perceive value in this market? What is important to you right now for this market? Okay, now give me, let me give you an example. Value is everywhere, firstly, from different perspectives. Look at a daily chart and crude oil. That's not your value area. That's not where you should perceive value to trade today. If you wanna hold a short for a few weeks or a few days at least, Yes, might maybe wait for the high, lower close from 49.81 and then trade it back towards 49, 44.91. Simple value error trade. But that's not our value error for a day trader. Nice to know though. 
Yeah. Okay, now look at a 120 minute chart. We got value here. I mean, I'm, I've been focusing on this value since August, 14th of August. Keep in mind, these values do shift, okay? Meaning that like I had this value right here, I had a value below, and now I've got a value higher. This is a stage three. Now in the trading framework, I go into stage analysis, which I will break down. Because what you'll find is that the market, especially these wider valuers, it doesn't just go like this wider valuer here. This is the main wider valuer. Goes all the way back to August, right? 11th, 14th. Now, what you'll find, firstly, is the market doesn't just get above value and say, okay, well, that's it, we're done, all the way back down to here. This 120 minute chart, use some common sense. I say common sense, but common sense is not common, as you guys know. But why would you want to short 49, 80, 96 as soon as it gets there? It's a nice idea because you think, oh, 49, 80, I put an order there. Put a stop at 50, 20. Got 40 tick stop. I've got a massive potential reward all the way back to 45s. That ain't gonna happen. It's a nice idea, but it's not reality. If you know the market, you'll understand that. But some people sit there and say, well, this is a trade I wanna take because I wanna look for the trade at 45. That's not an intraday trade. That's a swing trade. It's good to know there's potential here for longer time from sellers, but that's not your trade as a day trader. So understand that, you know, that's why I said you need to know what you're looking for. Now I move here, I'll say, okay, well, this is now stage three, at least I know where I am, what context I'm within, okay? Unfair highs on a daily chart, unfair highs on a bigger uh, picture perspective on a two hour chart, there's a stage three, okay? Stage three is the formation of shorter term value outside of the bigger value. This is basic stuff, I mean, if you guys get confused by this, this is simplified, right? So you got, this is very, very simple, you just need to sometimes it might go over your head, but once you see it and you ask some simple questions, very easy to understand. All right, so you have a look at this. Okay, now I have value here, more my value here. We've got the value for the day, which has actually done a pretty good job today. But what I typically do is put a profile in myself, because sometimes it starts, you know, a few days ago, two or three days ago. But I put a profile in here, you know, that, that's my value. So value here is where 70% of the volume traded. Uh, in a sense, where did the market mostly accept in this price range? Value is, remember, a, um, a guide as to where the market wants to trade. So the low volume areas from the composite profile, which is on the right, this actually goes back a few years. You can just take it back a few months. But this gives me some potential areas where the market may reject. I mean, you can see it's very much rejecting around these areas anyway. Okay, and some people get so excited by that, they just try to trade every low volume node. It's a nice idea, I've tried it, and everyone thinks, oh, well, this is it, this is the holy grail that didn't exist. And then you realize, oh, it still doesn't exist. Okay, so firstly, trading every low volume node, low volume area is not gonna work out, okay? And if it does, let me know, because I'll try it again. But um, it, it's not that easy. It's not just like, okay, well, it's rejection, let's just trade it, it's gotta go. It doesn't work like that. All right, so these low volume areas typically do hold, but I'm not gonna just put an order there. So what I would do, I will wait for an auction failure pattern. There's a timing execution process that I cover in my next webinar, but Peter's also gonna cover timing execution. But I would already say here, I'm gonna short it here. I'm gonna look for a push from a 49.66 down to 49.36, okay? I actually took a trade last week based upon a vision. So just give an example of what it looks like. Well, I took a few trades on crude oil, but um, show you a few examples of how it looks when you put it into practice. So I'll do the vision, I'll do the plan before I take the trade. It's, it's well ahead of time. Even live in my live mentorship room, I would usually say where I'm gonna trade, what exact price I'm gonna see the sellers hit the bids or lift offers. I actually say where I'm gonna read order flow before I read it. The rest of the time, I'm not looking at order flow. Okay, I am not fascinated by numbers. I have to keep watching them changing every few seconds. It is not in any shape or form interesting to me and I don't get off on it. So I'm not gonna sit there and just watch bid ask footprints and the depth of market moving up or down all day long, okay? I'm only gonna watch it when I'm thinking about already getting long or short. So that's a key thing if you're gonna use Audify. You wanna watch it at the right place, right time, okay? Just save you a lot of time and energy and also save you hopefully a lot of capital as well. All right, so look at crude oil here, visions on, um, da, 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 here it is, this is the third. So I wanted to look for a short here, 49.36. Uh, I actually said 48.29 and below. So these red boxes are actually where I'm gonna read order flow. The green box is where I'm gonna read order flow for longs. Red boxes for order flow for shorts. The blue box is where I'm not gonna trade long or short. So very, very clear, that's clarity. 
I can have confidence in that and I can trade that with discipline because I have confidence and clarity in the plan, right? And now I have the courage because I know what it means. I know why I believe it. Therefore, I can commit to the trade, meaning I can see it through to the right place, okay? Purely with those four Cs, right? Now you look at the trade, I actually took two. The first one, short five, three off, one, one. Then I took three, stopped out, okay? Still a profitable day, I think it's $420 overall. But I took the trade that I'm supposed to. You know, I do this every day, okay? Bunds, euro stocks, crude oil. Those are my markets right now. All right, so let's uh, move on with this. So, uh, so basically, waiting for the auction failure pattern, which I've already just showed you. I'll show you more examples um, when we go to the timing execution stuff. Of course, you can, guys can come into the room. Um, so the power story, okay? Well, firstly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just sort of um, put this on my Twitter page again. It's twitter.com forward slash L2ST. I post it up on there. Read for it yourselves, guys, but this is basically on the left-hand side. It's the psychology of the market. It's a story that I understood. A story is basically a belief structure. Like, if you think about a belief, what is a belief? It's a story that you believe, all right? Okay, it's, it's a something that you tell yourself that you believe. So I basically firstly started with stage analysis. I didn't have profiling. I started using profiling sort of around 2005. So before that, I was trading with context, but I was using multiple time frames and stage analysis, okay? Now typically stage one accumulation phase, stage two is initiative activity upside, but what you'll find is the stage one happens below wider value and the stage three above wider value. So basically the stage one of the three becomes a valuer as well which you can trade, but it depends on what your objectives are. So if I look at crude oil right now, I'd say, well, I will trade that as long as I can get 20 ticks. So I look at 66 level. If it trades 60s, that's where I'm probably going to get in. I've got 35s potentially to play for. So I already know 60 to 35, I can potentially pay for 25 ticks. It's good enough to take. If I want 10 ticks though, it's fine as well. If I want 50 ticks, am I going to take that trade? No. If I want 100 ticks, am I going to take that trade? No, because it's not good enough. That value I will only give me 25 ticks. So not only do I know why I'm going to take the trade, where I'm going to get in, I also know how much it's going to potentially give me with a very high probability of um, belief and confidence, firstly, because I've seen it so many times. Now, that's something you can't get. You have to build it through experience. But also, you know, the only place you can start without experience is logic, understanding, and a good story. Right now, moving on, um, I think we need there. So typical trading uh, framework. This is what I normally do. I highlight the balance value area. I'm looking for shorts where areas are unfit for the buyers, meaning the buyers are more than likely going to lose interest because it's quite high based upon where, upon where the market is typically just recently found value. So like the crude oil balance value area, the market's giving me that data. So this is why I mean be passive. I'm not saying that's where value is. The market's telling me that's where established value. It's telling me where it rejected. So I'm not making these levels up. The market's actually telling me where it rejected and where it accepted. So I'm using the data from the market, meaning that that's how I have that passive mindset because I'm listening. I'm watching what the market's telling me. It's a thought process. You're watching the mind of the market when you look at price and volume profiles. All right? Now I use Fibonacci extension. I'm not gonna get into too much. It's a very significant place where the typical um, imbalance phase does happen. Very, very high probability. That's the only, way I, uh, only time I trade away from value. Tends to happen more on the DAX and crude oil than most markets that I've traded. Um, but again, you'll see that and you'll see how we, it is very high probability. You'll have a lot of confidence with that trade, but only at that point in time. So what I do is I measure Fibonacci extensions around the balance value area. Um, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because this is supposed to be a bit of a sort of a primer in the foundational concepts. Use the foundational concepts initially. Get on with that. You know, Then you can add the additional layers like Fibonacci extensions, uh, multiple time frame and confluence analysis, order flow tools. You know, this point is putting jigsaw and market data or trying to read the order flow on the depth of market. If you don't have the story in the first place, you know, if you have a shit story, order flow and the next, the icing on the cake without the cake is useless. So more information, info at the trading framework.com. Got the website, the trading framework.com um, and also got the mindful traders website so that's basically clearing because uh, i just gave up on trying to refer people to independent retail traders that, that don't offer a risk limit yeah so so basically i've got mindful traders here as well um 
you got all the details there. You can see all the commissions and everything as well. Um, so very, very low rates, like 60 cents per side. You'll probably save about a dollar, two dollars per side uh, because we basically will clear through uh, Eden F Man, Merrick Spectrum, which because they, they're institutional trading firms, they do such high volume, you get the lower rates because you're now uh, have, holding an account under them. Right, so we use them as an umbrella to get the low commission rates, but also the risk layer, which prop firms have and retail brokers don't offer. So that's that. But trading framework, that's for the trade. Again, you know, there's loads of free training stuff here. I don't try to sell anything. I mean, there's a product store here. But I think if you're not familiar with what I do, it will make a hell of a lot more sense to watch some of these recordings. I mean, there's a spread trading webinar there. But there's if you want to learn a bit more about the trading framework, probably the best thing to do if you haven't already done it, is actually just put your name and email address in here because that five part free video training series really just expands on what I just spoke about today and it'll give you some, um, some more tips. Um, and that's it really, so I'll take some questions and uh, see where, I'm just gonna go and, uh, Peter, if it's okay, I'm just gonna get, go for a minute and get a drink quickly, I need some water. So Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right, just give me a minute, yeah? Yeah, okay, so now a is a good time. Little chat if you like, Peter. Well, I'll go. I'll be back in two minutes. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Now's a good time to enter questions. Um, but this is very much along um, the same way lines I look at the market. Um, you know, really having a, a deeper think about the market than just uh, being a perma fader. Who's you know, when the market's moving up, you're always looking for a short, and when the market's moving down, you're always looking for a long. Because that's the trap most people get into. And um, you know, there are some opportunities the market gives you that are the maybe a little bit more cerebral and maybe a little, little less obvious but they're actually much safer trades um but you do find a lot of people you know start out looking for the real kind of hero trades um anyway that's all i had to say on that i hope he comes back soon because uh, i've run out of words um must be a big place he's at if it's, it takes so long to get some water all right now yeah i have to go downstairs i just went downstairs i ran as well <laughs> There you go. Back okay, to so guys. Um, so, Peter, so you just had a little chat, yeah? Okay, so um, I don't see the questions. Where are the questions? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, hold on. All right, got them. Got them. Yeah. Do you want to read them out, Peter, or do you want to pick some out, or should I just go through them and pick them out myself? Uh, if you're okay to go yeah, through them, that's fine. that's fine. Yeah, well, I'll do that then. Okay, cool. Let's start at the top. I mean, there's quite a few, so I probably won't be able to get through all of them. But uh, I'll try to do my best. All right, so. Uh, lots of good mornings, thank you. It's very tight, very good, bad opportunity. Sit on my hands the whole session. Um, and again, it depends on what you're doing, Arthur. Um, so, um, you know, if you're trying to look for a smaller trade, there's opportunities there. I mean, there's a lot of excuses right now. Not necessarily say you have an excuse, but there are a lot of traders which sometimes do say, well, it's just so shit, there's nothing to do. Well, firstly, one of the thing is, I'm not making nowhere near what I did, you know, back in 2012, 2013. Bunds and Euro stocks has not given me the same opportunities that I had last year or the year before. So, you know, first of all, you know, we always say, even with systems, the past is never indicative of future results, neither are statistics. But even with discretionary trading, what you did last year is not linear, meaning uh, most of us come into this business, I used to think it's always going to be more, 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 until I hit 2012. You know, at the end of 2012, doing really well 2013, then after that, making less, making less. I'm a better trader. I understand more about me, I understand more about the market. So it's not me, it's the market conditions, as I was saying. So, so what do we do? Do we accept that? Do we adapt? Do we start looking for other opportunities? We have to adapt. We're entrepreneurs, you know, as traders, we're, we're, we're businessmen. If you need to diversify, so I started looking more at some shorter term trades. This is why I bought crude oil back in. Looking at mini DAX as well. So I started planning last year, like November, and I've been, you know, getting ready for that. Just trade crude oil again. I've started that now. So, you know, the thing is, you are in total control with which opportunities you take advantage of. Like I've had a lot of people just trade the burn and saying, oh, shit, it's shit, it's no good, it's no good. Well, what are you doing about it? You're just sitting there crying and, you know, just, you know, just beating yourself up. You know, do something. Are you a businessman? Are you a trader or what? You know, look for opportunity. That's your job. If the opportunity isn't there, go somewhere else. You know, that's something that we all have to do as traders. The market's always going to provide opportunities. So firstly, if you have a limiting belief that you think, okay, the markets have had it, high frequency trading system has taken over, there's nothing left to do. I know a guy that made 30 million pounds just last month trading, scalping, right? So 
there, there's people making a living from this, as I am, and other people are as well, but we have to adapt. We sometimes change the things we do, you know? And that's exactly what you guys have to learn to do as well, you know? Um, so, okay, so, uh, hi, Cam, name is, miss, uh, is spelled as dad, uh, Master Tov, <laughs> Okay, um, questions. I'm trying to get to the questions, Peter. There's so many highs and yeses. Would you talk a little bit slower? Um, I get that quite a lot. I have a lot of information. I try to get it out quite quickly. Um, I apologize for that. Maybe you can replay the recording in slow motion or something. But yeah, I, I can't unfortunately change the way that uh, I talk. Um, I do try to talk slowly, but it is quite quick. I know. Where, um, all right, so let's start at the bottom. Where can you get the market profile? Um, actually, I want to start at the top because the people that ask the question first, should get them first. But I'll start in a sec. All right, here's a link. Uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, how do you read all the flow? Well, that's in the next webinar, so Peter's gonna go into that. Um, he'll go into that, and then I'll go into uh, my order flow stuff in the webinar following next week's one. Um, aren't we here to learn about order flow? Well, TJ Solari, he's left, actually. <laughs> Uh, the whole point here is you won't understand all the flow until you understand the other stuff, right? So, so yeah, it's got to start somewhere, but he's gone anyway. If you're in a bad condition, you are not profitable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what trading platform is this? Oh, that was Market Dollar for the charts. Um, all right. I appreciate your honesty. Thank you very much, Marcel. Marcel, good, good stuff. Can you recommend cheaper volume profile software? I was looking at Rancho Dinero as a ninja add-on. Yeah, there's actually a few. Uh, if you go to the website, um, I use Market Delta, okay? Um, but I get it free. I mean, as an educator, I get a lot of stuff free, <laughs> right? And that does, it, and I sort of, I'm quite upfront with that. I'm not gonna pretend I'm paying for stuff. I pay for my data. Um, but, you know, as educators, you do get stuff free. And, um, you know, obviously it makes it cheaper because you're not paying for it, right? So, but I do understand most traders, you wanna keep your expenses low. So on the website, when you go to the trading framework under FAQs, You'll actually notice that I've actually listed some other um, some other plugins like for Ninja Trader. Some people like um, some people like Sierra Charts. It's cheap. It's twenty five dollars, I think, a month with the market profile enabled. It's got footprints and everything. Then you got Rancho De Niro, which I think is probably the best one for Ninja. Um, you got Gomi Tools, which are cheap. Um, well, they're free. I'm not sure if he's charging for them right now. There's Advanced Market Tools, and then you got some um, some stuff from Ninja.co as well. Um, so they've got a nice composite profile. I'm not sure if they've got bid ass footprints though. But then again, you've also got, um, you know, Jigsaw is like, you know, you get a lifetime license for that, of course, and Peter will talk about that. You're probably better off with that if you want to read order flow. Because you can actually do the same kind of stuff I do with footprints with Jigsaw. Um, it's it's just a, a slightly different sort of layout. Um, that's all it is, you know, it's the same data though. All right, so let's have a look. For some reason, the screen just keeps popping right to the top again. Uh, do you fade highs and lows? No. Uh, interesting. Going to have a listen, watch a few more times. Rapid speech, hard to talk. Okay. Can you please repeat auction failure pattern one more time? It was a bit fast for me. So that's for Tom. Okay, well, let's have a look at that. Which I'll probably show you on another market. But firstly, for example, if we look at the YM. Okay, so the mini Dow. So this is a bigger value here. Okay, wider value here. Um, I call it a wider value because it just spans back longer in time, not necessarily wider upwards and downwards. So you notice I leave prior value as behind. I mean, you, if you have to zoom out of this chart, you can see there's very little time the market doesn't trade value. If I move to 240 minute. And I've left them there, but you can see there's very little time. I'm probably deleted a few. The imbalance doesn't last long. So this is why I don't care about the breakouts and the imbalances um, because it's just when the market's now looking for value. I just patiently wait for value, usually found the next day or within the same day. So when we get a breakout, people are like, okay, well, I don't know what to do now. I trade value, but there's no value. Wait for your value here. If you trade value, wait for it. You know, if you're waiting for a bus, you don't go to the train station, right? It's common sense, right? So, you know, you've got the YM here. So this is a bigger picture. So where do I take a short? Do I just take a short here because of the low volume node? Most of us would with limited knowledge. Okay, but then we look at the short term chart and we say, okay, well, wait a minute. Intraday, we've got a lot more information now. 
we can see this might now keep in mind profiles weren't like this about six seven years ago and i'm sure peter will say the same but look intraday here we're getting trend days pretty much every day multiple distributions so what you do is you use a combination of the composite profile but the the last distribution is the key thing that the price is advertised higher all right it's advertised higher and as long as it's distributed volume at price which means it's just basically bulged on the profile like this okay these are bulges this last distribution shows you that it's still accepting higher so i wouldn't want to be short now yet because the market is successful in the auction higher so why do i want to be short when i understand the market is successful in advertising price higher and bringing in trade doesn't make any sense so people actually trade low volume nodes like this they really can't understand profiling if you're just going to short the low volume areas as we go higher low volume no just keep shorting them as higher the higher we go i used to do that to some extent peter would tell you i used to scale in quite aggressively at one point but i had to change that because i had to i had to sort of realize that the market conditions are changing and then i started to realize that the multiple distributions were happening but i could see it very clearly very quickly and you see this low volume node here this is the auction failure pattern here 18192 why it's the last rejection area before the last distribution at higher prices so we basically get below that and hit like 79s down our 70s here we're probably going to be then more likely to go back towards lows until then don't take a short and now you look at other markets you look at crude oil you know this uh 49.66 that i'd be i'll be a lot more confident shorting 49.61.60 there versus shorting 85s right so that's an auction failure pattern very simple okay so um da, 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 da. <laughs> i'm glad i know the english man do you have time to breathe <laughs> not really um as you've talked about adapting how how what is it is for a trader to focus on their own growth and being mindful of their own development um it's the most important thing if you're not more mindful about your own development and everything else that you experience in trading whether it's trading or anything in life it's always going to be a reflection of you internally so if your shit i say you have an internal world you have an external world your internal world is pretty much reflecting it's like a perception is a projection your projector you're projecting based upon what you believe and see internally in a way like if you feel shit a lot of the time it's not instant okay but if you feel shit a lot of the time you don't feel good there's tightness in the chest and you're taking shallow breaths and you just feel depressed and look depressed and look sad your life is typically going to uh, uh, basically reflect that you're going to have more of that so like you know if you feel confident you breathe confident you know you breathe i mean i just create a vacuum in my mind i, I, I meditate until it's clear you know i've been meditating over 10 years i start meditating in two or three seconds it's all gone no thoughts just pure consciousness right so that has to be built over time so you know and then when you have that vacuum you know you're like a sponge everything's just coming in coming in coming in you know keep in mind your conscious mind only processes around 128 bits per second you're unconscious about 4.3 million bits per second you know it's a part of you if you don't believe in the subconscious mind you, you, you go, whoa how the how the hell do you stay alive when you sleep not consciously how do you get a heartbeat how do you how's your bub, blood pumping through your body right now your unconscious mind is there every day you can't do anything without it so unless you start to figure out how your behavior is a reflection of your internal state nothing's going to change externally so in a way how important is that without it the rest of it's useless you know you, you have to be self-aware you have to know how your actions and your behaviors are created from your internal state you don't just do things there's a whole process behind that but it happens in a second so these people don't know what's going on do you feel crude be provide better opportunities than es yeah es is not a good market for new traders uh, it's just peddled by a lot of people uh, but you know again you know the evidence is out there you know most people are struggling in trading and if you look at it 95 percent of the trade that even the s p um you ask how many even s p traders there are in a prop trading floor in the city in london probably about two percent hardly no one es is not a good market for newbies okay i like it and i i, I trade it well but only with size um trade crude oil trade something with more bang for your buck why trade one contract on es to get eight ten ticks when you can get like potentially 40 ticks on crude oil doesn't make any sense you know with like a you know you potentially get a three r on crude oil two and a half to three r over like a year of trading on es you get maybe 1.2 1.3 r on average and that's with size 
So I don't recommend the S to newbies. For the composite profile, I use MT4, tank indicator, allow me to do composite profile, blah, 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 blah. Um, all right, so what is a good time to start the composite profile for the intraday? Um, composite profile should go back to a, like a major lower high. I don't want to build it like consistently. So I just go back to it like, a, I just have it for all of the data on this chart, which actually is going to be to whatever I set the beginning of the chart to. It's usually a good few months. I would say I have about at least 12 months worth of data for your composite profile. I mean, I've got this going back all the way to 09. That's probably overkill. So I might as well change that. Actually, the reason I've got it to 09 is probably because that's where the major high was. Yeah, I don't need it going all the way back there. So yeah, I mean, just bring in like about at least 12 months to three years. That's a good start. Let's say 12 months, that's good enough. Could you talk about mastering helping trading routines? Uh, firstly, write them down, you know, tick them off like a schedule. You know, a lot of guys use schedule. I've got a schedule here, meditation schedule. Just make a schedule like you do. Like if you've uh, got a workout routine, have a schedule. Um, if you've got uh, like a, a diet routine, like a diet plan, have a schedule. You have a routine, you have it written down, you know. If you want a trading plan, you write it down. What's, what is the process? What, what are you supposed to focus on step by step? Have a process, have a routine. So I've got a meditation schedule, but actually you can use it for everything. Uh, meditation schedule is here. So we've got a bit of time, so I know I'm going a bit over here, so we'll finish off soon. But I'll just show you this, like this is very, very simple. Little table like this, week one, week two, week three. Right then, how many minutes and what? This is for meditation, but whatever it is, just put it in routine. Uh, okay, so I think that's probably enough, Peter. Thank you, Cam, and uh, thanks everybody for coming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a recording. Um, I'm going to make a recording. I'm, I've got two recordings, one from GoToWebinar and one that I made on my PC. So I'll figure out which is the best recording. There will be a link going out to the recording, as promised. So um, thank you, Cam, and uh, we'll, we'll see you all in about a week. Yeah, so it's Peter next week, right? And then I'm the week after, and then Peter's going to... Um, then Peter again, then me again. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We'll yeah. go on for as long as we need. Right. Yeah, <laughs> forever. Okay, guys, thanks for joining in. Take care. Appreciate your time. And Peter, thanks for having me as well, and Stephen as well. Take care, guys. Have a good night. No problem. Good night, all. No problem. Good night, all.